Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for the UFC 288 co-main event. A fascinating lightweight clash between Benil Dariush and the former champion Charles Oliveira. Before we go any further, make sure you check out Rush Royale. It is the ultimate tower defense game. You're going to build a deck full of different units, archers and blade dancers and trappers. You can add heroes to those units. It is a very fun and addictive game and you've got to defend the tower against the waves of enemies. Scan the QR code on screen or click the link below and you can get a free download as well as a bunch of goodies. And for a limited time until July 29th only, you can add Jake Paul to your deck, the man himself, and he's even voiced his own character which is very cool he's got a super punch he's got a champion's belt all of these things are going to make it easier for you to defend your tower against the enemies defend the damn tower is the rallying call of jake paul and rush royale and with jake's help you can defend the tower and defeat the waves of enemies and make sure you get jake paul before july 29th because you can keep him forever and you can keep upgrading him one of the best modes of this game is the player versus player where every enemy that you defeat then goes over to attack their tower and you'll get all kinds of rewards and trophies to keep upgrading your units. Install Rush Royale for free using my link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen. You'll get Jake Paul to help with your tower defense and you will also get a master chest with all kinds of useful rewards. You can even exchange them for a legendary card. Now this is a limited time offer so don't wait. You need Jake Paul to add into your deck. He's going to be very useful defending your tower. Right, lots of different things to talk about with this one. That's why I'm reclined in my seat a little bit. That's why I've got a beverage so... Settle in. I might be 20 minutes on this one. I don't know. I'm not sure how I'm feeling. Like, it, I, I'm, I'm interested in this one for a variety of different reasons. Of course, because, you know, Benil Dariush, we've kind of been waiting for him to, to, to arrive at this opportunity. Um, he's he, he's just impressed me tremendously in his last few fights, like, particularly against Gamrot. Like, and this, this is kind of where. Like Tony Ferguson's maybe a good example of this because I feel like Tony Ferguson a couple of years ago could have been a bit more problematic. I feel like Charles Oliveira maybe not at that point right now, but maybe more on his way there than at his prime at this point. And that's not necessarily down to his age or anything like that. It's 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 more down to the the the, the shots that he's took and the training camps that he's had and and his style of fighting. Um, I mean, it is. He is hittable. He, he is a little bit reckless. He's very exciting. But he's got this chaotic flow state of fighting, which has been able, been able to overwhelm, I mean, 33 opponents. Um, let, let's quick tailor the tape. Okay, so Charles Oliveira with a record of 33 wins and nine losses with one no contest. Uh, Benil Dariush, 22 wins, four losses and a draw. Um, both five foot ten. Uh, Oliveira has a two inch reach advantage at seventy four inches. Um, Southpaw the orthodox. Although Darius does does switch, and Oliveira will just walk after his opponent. So he's, I mean, he's literally switching Southpaw to orthodox if you're classing it as which foots forward. Um, I, I'm interested to see whether these two guys decide they want to strike it out, because. Benil Darius has excellent takedown offense. It's at 80% as an overall stat. But if we if we drill into that specifically in his Gamrot fight, which is very interesting, he stopped 15 of 19 takedowns, which is 79% takedown offense. So I mean, I mean it's it's literally bang on, you know, his his average. He's very consistent against a high level of opposition as well, which of course uh, Mateus Gamrot is. And, you know, quite happy to trade submissions with Gamrot, especially leg locks, which I wouldn't want to do. <laughs> he's, he's he's dangerous with, with his leg locks. But of course, Benil Dariush is confident with his ground game. He knows that he can hold his own on the ground with anybody in this division. And in, in, in his head and in my head right now, that will include Charles Oliveira. Not because Charles Oliveira's success rate with submissions overall is not better than Dariush, because it, it, it is. I mean, if we break down their record a bit further, have a quick drink. If we break down their record a bit further, excuse me, <clears throat> done a lot of talking today. I'm doing a lot more talking now. So Charles Oliveira has 33 wins. He has 21 wins by submission, nine by rear naked choke, five by guillotine, three anacondas, and then arm bars, triangles, arm bar, triangles, varieties. Um, a very broad skill set, a very, a very dangerous individual at, at, at every at every stretch of the grappling range. 
Um, very good at attacking necks. And something that we've seen more consistently in, in more recent fights is how his neck attacks couple with his striking. If you think about what he was doing with with uh, Gaethje, he was he was kneeing and then snapping his head down into a neck attack, or he was uppercutting then neck attacking, and in th this this constant pestering of of the neck is it could be quite fatiguing for Dariush, especially because Dariush does stand quite heavy on his lead leg. He does tend to lean a little bit, and and that will make Charles Oliveira, especially because Oliveira stands very tall, he, he stands very kind of Muay Thai, high on his back leg. Oliveira is going to feel like he's 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 standing over Dariush a little bit, which is going to make his neck even more available feeling to him. Um, so I expect Oliveira to to assuming that he's not revamped his game and changed anything, I expect him to walk into Dariush's range quite quickly, and I expect him to be mixing up uh, nice, clean, straight punches with knees and potentially some kicks with the aim of tying him up, wrapping up his neck, dragging him to the floor. Um, I think that's going to be very difficult because I feel like Dariush has not only got good takedown defense, as we've seen, but that takedown defense against against Gamrot, you, you can't even really just class it as good takedown defense. It was just good wrestling. <laughs> it was just good wrestling. Like, you, you can't just stop takedowns against someone like Gamrot because they, they, they shoot and reshoot and reshoot. So... If you don't turn the offense on them at some point, you, you end up being at the end of a chain of, of of takedowns that have taken up two minutes of the fight, and and you're exhausted. And they might be exhausted as well. But the trade off is, you know, you're both equally exhausted, but they're winning. So, you know, and something that Gregor Gillespie said that stuck out in my mind. I've thought about it a couple of times today. He he, it was in a post fight interview, and he said, "I I knew that I had to get tired to make him tired." And I don't know why, but it never occurred, never occurred to me before that if you're trying to work hard to make someone tired, you have to accept that there's going to be an element of fatigue on your part as well. And I don't know why, but it just kind of never clicked in my head that if I was trying to make my opponent tired, I wasn't going to be tired. And forgive me, I know that sounds like an odd thing to say, but it was just, it was a very clear way that Gregor Gillespie worded it out and it stuck in the back of my brain and and I and I think that this is the same with with a lot of these uh, a lot of these fighters that uh, you know heavy wrestlers heavy grapplers they they've got that acceptance that they're going to get tired like I I'm going to fatigue but you're fatiguing even more than me and I'm winning like Dariush's wrestling against Gamrot was was fantastic and and the moments where he dropped back for an ankle or whatever tangled with a submission it just reinforced his confidence against someone that's very dangerous on the ground. We, we saw what he did to, to Tony Ferguson. We saw what uh, Charles Oliveira did to Tony Ferguson. The, the thing with Charles Oliveira, the thing that concerns me about him, and let me have a look at, see what the stats say here. Yeah, okay, so sometimes the stats just don't line up, but other times they do. So strikes lander per minute for Charles Oliveira is 3.48 uh, 3.81 for Benil Dariush. Slightly more accurate for Charles Oliveira, um, but he does put himself right in range. And I do feel like he tries to hit his opponents with almost everything, whereas Dariush will posture and 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 uh, faint things that may be counted as strikes. I always have to take that into a consideration with someone that's not just trying to, not just a not just a, a banger. You know what I mean? Someone that's 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 ticking a little bit when they're thinking about what they're doing with their hands. You can see Dariush will sometimes try and play to set somebody up for another shot. Um, and he's got he's got heavy hands as well. I think this is something that we can't underestimate with uh, with Benil Dariush. Uh, five knockouts out of 22 wins, of course, but the times we've seen him clip people and hurt them, you, I kind of feel like it's not necessarily a lack of power. It's a lack of, of success at that range which is why he's not got the knockouts on his record. And I do feel like that will increase. And if you think about the amount of times that Charles Oliveira was knocked down against uh, Gaethje, and we're actually going to check it just to make sure. I mean, they've counted one knockdown here against Gaethje, but he was hurt a couple of times. And, and, and he is quite comfortable with sitting to the floor as well. And this is, this is where, at this level, I don't think people are going to be drawn into Oliveira's game in this way. I mean, we always, I always remember Vadum playing possum 
when uh, when when Mark Hunt was punching him, Mark Hunt would hit him and he'd kind kind of take the shot, but kind of not. And like you know, I've mentioned it to you guys on the channel before. He like kind of fall to the floor and be like, "Yeah, come on, come on, run, run and finish the fight. Come on, finish the fight. You're winning." <laughs> um, I I don't know whether there was an element of that with Charles Oliveira against Gaethje. I mean, Gaethje we know hits hard, but we also know Charles Oliveira does take a shot, but that does run out, and and he he, he was going down quite easily against uh, against Gaethje, and and it does concern me that at the point where he is at in his career now, thirty three and nine. That's a lot of fights. There's a lot of training camps. Shootbox f- from the the way back in the day, when when you know I was the early roughhouse days when when Daly and I were training together, like the idea of shootbox was 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 like the the pinnacle of violence in mixed martial arts. Like you've got to rep- you've got to remember that the fighters that represented shootbox for us were Vanderlei Silva and then Shogun and Ninja. I, they were they were absolute savages, especially in Pride when they were all and you know wild, savage, vicious, vicious fighters. But they were like that because they trained like that, and they they the ones that managed to get out of the gym and into professional competition were the cream of the crop. It's the same with Nova and Yao as well. The 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 filter, filtration process in those gyms is is can be quite damaging to some of the fighters, and Charles Oliveira's always been been you know he's, he's cut easy he's, he's been hit and hurt i just wonder at what point in his career he is at where he can keep withstanding things this this is why earlier in the show you'll notice i'm not sure whether i'll, I'll put a time code in or something I, I mentioned uh you know a caveat he may have upgraded his game and i don't know i mean i don't know i, I guess the thing is with charles Oliveira, he's got so many facets to his game that that I feel like he can exemplify any one of them and capitalize on it against against a lot of these fighters. Like he may have he may have intensified his wrestling training. He he may be ferocious with his ability to take the fight to the floor and make Benil Dariush deal with his wrestling. Because that's really that's really what he's gonna need to do if he's gonna win the fight on the ground. Unless Dariush decides he's gonna come in and try and prove a point against Charles Oliveira, he's gonna take him down and show him who's the best grappler in the division. Maybe. I kind of feel like Benil Dariush is too smart for those kind of games, though. I, I feel like he's not going to necessarily try and prove it. I mean, the thing is, it was said in the commentary, uh, I can't remember what fight it was, like Drakkar Close maybe, or I can't remember which one it was, But and I can't even remember who was commentating actually, but I remember them saying, I remember them saying that, that Benil does like to beat people at their own game, so maybe he will. Maybe he will. For those people out there that feel like uh, you want to take a big gamble, I think Benil Dariush by uh, by submission is going to be quite a rare pick. But but who knows? I mean, I know, uh, of course, Charles Oliveira is coming off that that submission over Makachev. But then the difference with Makachev is that he forces you to deal with with with, with his get with his uh, re- uh, grappling game. And and I feel like Benil Dariush could do that to Charles Oliveira but I don't know if Charles Oliveira can do that to Benil Dariush not unless he's invested a lot of time in his uh, in his wrestling or if he's just decided to switch his striking game up and he's a bit more settled and a bit more a bit more defensively savvy he's got you know a bit more head movement perhaps and works behind a good jab like, I, I feel like there are areas of Charles Oliveira's game that he could potentially if he's got the motivation and he's got the 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 desire and the determination at this point in his career because he's had a lot of fights he could definitely you know have another run and look like a different fighter as of right now Benil Dariush I I feel he's kind of finding his rhythm like he's he's very comfortable in his skill set he knows what he does well I'm just checking their ages that's why I've just kind of my brain's wandered off so they're born. They're born. Both born in eighty nine. They're the same age, pretty much. But Neil Dariush is older by what five months. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like Dariush is 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 age aged in wisdom, and Charles Oliveira is aged in damage and experience, which can balance one another out. Experience does does benefit, but tends, in my opinion, tends to be at the the heavier weight classes, particularly heavyweight, which is why we see older heavyweights uh, dominating the scene sometimes. 
<sighs> I told you to settle in. My brain's racing today about this. It's just, it's it's just a, it's a really really interesting fight. And and there are there are certainly developments in Benil Dariush's game. I feel like his wrestling is definitely still developing. Again, as I said, I was very impressed with him against Mateus Gamera. I didn't expect him to be as as competitive in the wrestling ranges. Um, he's also uh, switching his stance a lot. We're, we're seeing that more as well. Now, the, the the danger is that if if Benil Dariush does decide to come in and, and be a little hard-headed about it and decide he wants to grapple with Oliveira, then there is the danger of him exhausting himself, clamped on a neck or wrapped up with his legs or whatever else, or even on the on the flip side, just exhausting himself, getting tangled up in that mess and then def having to defend submissions, like getting out of neck attacks and stuff. Because you've also got to think, you know, you're in a fight, even before the fight started, your heart rate's probably 120 because of anxiety and adrenaline and stuff. And then the fight starts and you're up at, you know, 160, 180, pretty quickly, I would say, for a lot of people. And you, and you can feel that, your heart pumping in your chest. So... What that heartbeat, what that heartbeat represents, is is blood flowing around that's moving oxygen, which means you need to keep breathing while that's happening. And at any point, even if the the choke isn't that tight, and you just can't quite breathe properly for a minute, your heart rate's going to start beating faster, and you're going to start to feel that exhaustion, that tingling in your arms and legs. It comes on so much quicker when you're in a fight. Like, you remember my, my fight against Chris Lytle? That came on really quickly. Like, I don't even remember. I don't even remember tapping him. It, it was just, I was just kind of, I, it was almost like I was in a daydream, like I was in the in the gym at Leicester Shoot Fighters back in the old days. But I remember that kind of tingly feeling in my hands and feet, like I was, and it's, it's, an, it's a, an, an odd place to be. And, and it can happen to either of these guys. You know, Benil Darius could quite easily wrap up Charles Oliveira's neck and, and start threatening him. Um, but, they could equally tangle one another is I think what I'm trying to say here as I'm rambling along. I feel like this could potentially be be uh, be settled in the striking range once Benil Dariush has established that he's the better wrestler. I've, I also feel like Benil Dariush can probably... He can probably set the pace of this fight after the first maybe two minutes... Because if Charles Oliveira comes out like a, like a bat out of hell like he does and he and he's marching down uh, Benil Dariush and he's trying to land that right hand over the top and he's trying to land that knee up the centre line and wrap his neck and Dariush is just smart and he knows what's coming and he's de defending and slipping and occasionally countering with that, that cracking left hand that he, that he pops down the pipe and just keeps moving, stays safe. Like He might start to find Charles Oliveira's forward move. He might even start... As you know, with Charles Oliveira, he gets reckless. He comes flying in with knees. And when it works and he wraps their neck up, it looks wicked. But when he throws himself into range and he lands and gets cracked in the face, it doesn't look quite as cool. And and these are the things where Benil Dariush is going to go, OK, I know he's going to be reckless. Again, assuming he's not changed. We have to keep that in mind. That's always the caveat, bear in mind, because when we're looking at these fighters, we're always looking based on what they've done up to this point, how they've performed up to this point. We can speculate and we can say, oh yeah, but they're this and they're that, but we have to base it on what we've seen so far. We know that Charles Oliveira can be reckless. He can throw himself into range, especially with those flying knees, because he doesn't really matter where he lands. Dariush is going to see those opportunities and he's going to look for those counter shots. And and, and he, if he can stay patient, stay calm for the first three, four minutes maybe, he might be able to land a couple of really damaging shots to Oliveira that might A, cut him, or B, knock him down. And then you're at a 10-8 round potentially, and, and Charles Oliveira's got a long way to go, and he's notoriously a fast starter that fades quickly. Whether that's a conditioning and weight-cutting issue, or whether that is uh, an enthusiasm and confidence issue, which I don't necessarily think it is, but we'll see. Fatigues make me fear. Fatigue makes cowards of us all, is the saying that I've just butchered. Um, what haven't I said? Two hittable chokes and knees, scribbles on my page. Both been knocked out, both been subbed. No pressure there, they're like, yeah. You're not going to do anything to me that's not already been done. Yeah, see, Dariush, when, when he took uh, when he took Drakkar closer's back and he was clamped on with a, with a body triangle standing, 
and Drakkar Close was able to just defend his neck for long enough to get to the end of the round. Like Darius came out in the second round and his legs were, were jelly. And Darius and uh, um, Drakkar Close recognised it straight away. He went straight away to kick the leg. It, it, they're, they're the kind of moments where, where Darius doesn't really need to expend unnecessary energy tangling up with Charles Oliveira. Um, what haven't I said? Okay, well, let's let me have a quick talk about because I feel like I've I've talked a little bit too much about Benil Dariush perhaps, but it, it, it I guess it's because I've talked a lot about Charles Oliveira on this channel. Like we know how good he is, like twenty one submissions out of thirty three victories. He's a very very dangerous individual. Look, he's uh, and, and he's he's gathered great experience. My concern with him, I suppose, is that he's not going to look at Benil Dariush. As he, you know, in the same way that he would a uh, Justin Gaethje or a Dustin Poirier or a Michael Chandler or a, uh, a Tony Ferguson, because because they've kind of come up like Charles Oliveira rose up and Benil Dariush has kind of been just just kind of behind him, maybe a little bit in his in his in his wake perhaps, and it's it's perhaps easy for uh, Charles Oliveira to look past him when he's dealing with all of these beasts that he's worked his way through, you know, during his rise to the title and his and his victory and his defense. Um, ultimately, what what we expect from Charles Oliveira is for him to be very aggressive, for him to walk uh, um, Darius down. And remember, this is most likely going to be Southpaw v. Orthodox for the majority of the fight, unless Darius decides he wants to capitalize on being uh, um, uh, Orthodox as well for a period of time. Southpaw v. Orthodox, which means that Charles Oliveira is going to have to be a little bit closer to land that right hand but it makes more sense to lead with it than it than it did against Gaethje. Um, so I would expect him to move quite quickly into range and start trying to land that right hand down the pipe. He'll also use the knee and potentially try and snap down for a neck attack or a guillotine. And I think he'll try and tangle up Darius quite quickly. And I think Oliveira will quite happily accept climbing up uh, Benil Darius as opposed to trying to take him down to the floor. Like we remember the times when he's when he's been on people's back standing when he's when uh, when he's choked them out. Um, it, it's it's like like he, he is he is one of the best at clamping onto somebody and locking in, and it seems to have a lot less of a of an, of an, of an effect on his lower body conditioning than uh, than it has other people. But that again might be a result of his training. Like there's positives and negatives to the the shoot box style of training, as there is with all the gyms. Um, the old notorious shoot box guys were just they were just such animals they were feral when it when it came to the 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 fights but then i feel like there's been an evolution in that in that gym and there is a lot more uh focus on technique now especially you know clean jiu jitsu and muay thai skills like we can see that with charles Oliveira. his 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 jiu jitsu was there and then his striking came up as well like that point when where against nick lentz where he caught his leg and punched him that to me felt like a turning point where he was like, oh, okay, no, I could I could sub you, but no, I think I'm just going to keep hitting you here. <laughs> um, that that's almost what I'm hoping for with with Charles Oliveira. I suppose I'm hoping to see a, a, a maybe a third stage of evolution in his game when, when it comes to you know his his elite level career. I think that would be a third evolution. Ooh, what a fight. What a fight. Let me have a quick look at the stats. I think I said everything. I mean, I think I've said everything that, that is relevant. I mean, of course, sub, sub average is going to be much higher for Oliveira than it is for Dariush. 2.8 compared to 0.9 doesn't mean that Dariush is not uh, lethal with submissions. It just means that he's going to be more selective about when he tries to apply them. Um, 80% takedown offense for Dariush, which was, of course, reinforced in the Gamrot fight at being 79%, which is pretty amazing um 34 percent takedown accuracy 40 percent takedown accuracy for charles Oliveira. so a slight advantage there um but again the deficit of takedown offense is mainly because charles Oliveira is not as bothered um he would much rather just be on the ground than have to go through the process of oh do we have to wrestle to get there can't we just both sit down and start tangling feet you know that's you know it's uh it's, it's like a can we just get to the jiu-jitsu part and through the exhausting and 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 sometimes brutish wrestling <laughs> um anyway um 
What else haven't I said? I think I've said it all. Look, we've talked about the strike and we've talked about the grappling. You know what I think now. I think this is a really fun fight. I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm a big fan of both of these guys. I'm excited that Benil Dariush is getting this opportunity. There's kind of nowhere to go after you beat someone like Gamrot. He's got to move forward and, and start fighting these, these big fights. And of course, if he wins here, it's got to be a shot at gold after this. All right. Enjoy the fights. Give us a like and a subscribe. I always forget to tell you, of course. And uh, I'll see you next time.